In this video we'll outline the calibration procedure of uh, all of our FL200 series uh, fuel instrument products. When you first uh, install your new uh, FL200 instrument and power it on, uh, the display will look something like this. We have the two channel unit and obviously we have the uh, three tank, four tank, five and six tank, uh, difference being the amount of bars uh, for each tank that are displayed. You will see that below each of uh, the tank indicators, just above uh, the, the gallon um, note, uh, there is a red X displayed. And uh, this red X is uh, basically telling you that the instrument has not been calibrated and will not work. Um, until the unit is calibrated, uh, there will be no display of uh, fuel level. To calibrate the unit, you will need to drain the fuel tanks place the aircraft in a level flight attitude and add the unusable fuel. Once you've done this, you'll start from an instrument that is powered off, hold both the top and the but bottom buttons together, press them in and just hold them when you turn the power on. Once the power comes on, you'll be told to release both buttons, you do that. The instrument can be mounted in one of two ways, either a north-south or a south-north depending on visibility angle. Um, all you need to do at this point is press the button at the, the top of the instrument. So if your text is upside down, just choose the button at the top and the text will be inverted and uh, you'll be able to read everything the right way around. Uh, before we do the calibration, the setup of the instrument has to be completed. Uh, the the, the um, measuring units of fuel are chosen, either gallons or liters. Uh, to move between different menu options, you use the bottom button. So pressing it once will move uh, from one selection to the other. Pressing the top button will save it and move to the next. <coughs> uh, the first thing we need to set on the fuel instrument is the red line quantity. Um, and uh, the information on how to obtain this is in the manual. So basically just take the value you have there. Um, if it's not correct, so if it's not three gallons in your case, uh, choose the bottom button, move to either the increment or the decrement arrow. Uh, so we'll just increment it a little, let's say to uh, 3.5. If you go a little too far, just move it over to the decrement arrow and uh, move the value back to where you need to be. Once you've got the correct value, choose done, press the top button. You then select uh, the yellow line fuel quantity. And if your aircraft does not have a yellow line quantity specified, then choose a value uh, equal to 0.1 of a gallon above the red line. In this case, uh, the unit is set by default at 8 gallons, and we will leave it at that for now. That concludes the setup. At this point, you just either choose Edit or Save. Choosing Edit will just go through the same menu we've been through, and choosing Save will save the values to the instrument. These values can be changed at any point in time. From here, you can either choose to uh, calibrate the tank or not. Um, in this case, uh, because of this demonstration, we're going to choose yes. So bottom button and then the top button to select it. You're given a warning um, that uh, the calibration will uh, erase the uh, contents of the tank data. Um, keep in mind that just entering the calibration procedure will not erase the data. Um, it's only once you start calibrating a tank. So by pressing continue at this point, you haven't erased anything, but the moment you start calibrating a tank, any data that's there will be erased. So we'll choose continue in this case. <coughs> now we have to choose a sender orientation. If your fuel sender, um, if the resistance increases with the value of, with the amount of fuel, you will choose yes in this case. And if it decreases, such as if you've got uh, one of the 270 to 30 ohm senders, then you will choose no. So for purpose of demonstration, we're going to choose yes, saying that our resistance will increase as our fuel increases. You then have an option to select which tank you want to calibrate, um, either one being the left or two being the right. Um, so we will choose one in this case being the left tank. The first thing we have to do is, and at this point we have an unusable fuel in the tank, so this is the zero fuel level, uh, is to comply with the requirements of the FAR uh, that the gauge is capable of indicating fuel level at zero quantity. You'll also see 
at the bottom of the gauge a signal value in this case it says 113 millivolts and this should be entered on your calibration chart that came with your instrument so tank number one a zero fuel point at 113 millivolts we press the top button when things are stable they are in this case you're then told to add two gallons of fuel and then press the top button when you're done so you go out to your plane you add two gallons of fuel um, wait 15 to 20 seconds for the fuel to stabilize and then press the top button you'll now see that you've got the previous reading which was the 113 millivolts and the next reading for our two gallon point now because you now have two gallons of fuel in the tank of 244 millivolts again you write this number down in your calibration sheet and the instruction tells you at the bottom uh, top button for the next you'll also see next to it is a green tick mark if that tick mark is red at any point in time your sender resistance has not moved in the correct direction or not changed at all and uh, the calibration of the instrument you will not be able to go to the next step you will just be able to exit and save what you have done this far so at this point we can continue we will press uh, the top button and we're told to add uh, the next two gallons of fuel which we will do and press the top button again and again as in the previous step you'll see your previous value and your current value of the four gallons. Uh, we'll calibrate this tank as well or that step and once again add another two gallons and move back again. We continue with this process until we have uh, our tank filled or until such a point where the instrument will not allow us to go any further. So we've now calibrated uh, eight gallons in this tank um, and um, we're going to, to say that this is the size of the tank. We'll stop at this point so now we're not going to add any fuel and by pressing the top button you'll see at the bottom it's got a red X next to the text that says top button to exit. If we now press the top button at this point um, we are going to be given the option to end the tank cal calibration. Um, if you say no uh, the calibration will go back to the step where you were. Um, you, you may find yourself in that condition where possibly someone forgot to add fuel and uh, you know you have to actually go back and do it. Uh, but in this case our, our, our sender is, is, is not moving any further so um, we will say yes uh, we want to enter the, exit the calibration at this point. And by doing that the calibration is now saved. You'll also see that the instrument has now moved to the second tank and we can repeat the same process um, on the second tank. If for some reason um, at any point in time you want to go back and either continue with further calibration on that first tank, you know, possibly you got to halfway through it and had to take a break um, or you need to change some of the, the top values, um, you know, possibly the, the, the incorrect amount of fuel was added or for whatever reason you need to go back. Um, you can select the tank that you want to to change. Now you'll see when you enter it, instead of just the one option, you now have three options to repeat from zero, continue at last, or continue with next. So it's just a matter of selecting the option that you want. We'll calibrate one point over here, so we'll say continue at next, and it takes us right back to where we were previously. So what we'll do, we're in that step, and we will add our two gallons of fuel, and there you see that the tick mark has changed to a green tick mark, and that means we are allowed to continue with that step. Pressing the top button uh, allows us uh, to continue the process as we have pre done previously, and so we can continue until the point is reached where uh, the fuel sender no longer moves because the tank is full and uh, we will get that red X at that point. We will exit just as we've done before and the new data will be saved for that tank. Once we're done with the calibration we can simply exit the instrument and you'll see that the red X has been removed from the side that we were calibrating and it still remains on the side that has not been calibrated and uh, we have a fuel quantity that uh, we had calibrated in there and uh, that uh, left side of the fuel gauge is now completely operational um, each scan takes approximately 20 seconds so 
uh, we, we give it you know approximately that to update um, once the resistance uh, of the tank has been updated in the table you get a full indication for a full tank and then anything on the way down uh, as the fuel levels change um, you will see there